we continue our discussion on stroke and now I will be talking to you regarding posterior circulation stroke. But before I talk about this, let us revise our neuroanatomy, especially regarding <coughs> circulation in the brain without which you will never understand this topic. So, we have at the moment I will talk to you only regarding posterior circulation. So, we have these two vertebral arteries, vertebral arteries, these two vertebral arteries and they unite to make the basilar artery. Okay. Now, this is anterior spinal artery which arise from the <coughs> two vertebral artery, they unite to make single uh, anterior spinal artery and this is the pica. Pica stand for posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay. And this artery, this is the ica. Ica stand for anterior inferior cerebellar artery. So, pica is posterior inferior and ica is anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Well, these are the pontine branches, these, these are the pontine branches. And here is the uh, superior cerebellar artery. And this is the posterior cerebral, cerebral artery, PCA. And this is the posterior communicating artery, posterior communicating artery. By this, posterior, posterior circulation is connected to the anterior, uh, anterior circulation that is via internal catheter artery. Okay? In fact, posterior communicating artery is the branch of internal catheter artery which unites uh, internal carotid artery to the posterior cerebral artery. So, this is the anatomy. These are the arteries which are going to supply the brain stem. This artery we will be talking about. Now, when we talk about uh, stroke in brain stem, first thing is medulla oblongata. So, let us have so quick recall. What are the arteries which are supplying the medulla is vertebral artery, anterior and posterior spinal arteries posterior inferior cerebral artery and basilar artery. So, now let us talk about what happened in lateral medullary syndrome. Again, we should know the basic concept about anatomy. Of the medulla, the basic concept goes like this. This is the inferior cerebellar peduncle. By this, cerebellum is attached to metal oblongata, and here is the tenth nerve nucleus. This is the eighth nerve nucleus, fifth nerve nucleus, descending fiber of sympathetic chain,
and here is the spinal lemniscus. Okay. What are, what are these fiber carry? They carry spinal lemniscus contain contralateral pain, touch, temperature. Or I can give a better simple example. In fact, we all know that these contralateral pain, touch and temperature are carried by spinothalamic tract. tract of the contralateral side. In fact, same fiber when they enter the brain, the name changes to spinal lemniscus. That is why if you read some of the books, they write this to be spinothalamic tract. But some of the books they write about spinal lemniscus. <coughs> okay. My idea to telling you is the problem is in the name, but as far as our content is concerned, same both spinal lemniscus and spinothalamic tract, they contain contralateral pain, touch and temperature. Remember, this spinothalamic tract is on the right side, this, this is the right side, this is the left side. So, this right headed they contain contralateral pain, touch and temperature. This is basic anatomy. Now, this part of the brain is supplied by vertebral artery. But again, there is a some confusion is there. Some of the books they write vertebral artery, but some of the books they write this is supplied by pica. I hope you remember pica is posterior inferior cerebral artery, but pica itself is a branch of vertebral artery. So, so again, I do not want that any confusion should be there. So, you, you should be are now aware this can be supplied by both, <coughs> right. So, now after this arterial supply. Now, let us see how patient will manifest. You have understood the basic concept. So, there will be ipsilateral cerebellar features, ipsilateral 10th nerve palsy, ipsilateral 8th nerve palsy, ipsilateral 5th nerve palsy and due to ipsilateral 5th nerve palsy, there will be, lo will, there will be loss of pain and all, all sensation in the ipsilateral side. Remember, all due to fifth nerve, motor and sensory fiber will be involved in the ipsilateral side of the face. Ipsilateral Horner syndrome, but contralateral loss of pain, touch and temperature, remember sparing the face. Contralateral uh, in, the, in the entire limbs, pain, touch, temperature will be lost but pain type temperature will be lost on ipsilateral side, right. So, now if I have to draw a picture of what I have told you, it, the picture will be like this. Sorry, I am not a very good artist. Well, this is the uh, this is the right side and this is the left side. And remember, uh, in this case, we are talking about right uh, medullary lateral medullary syndrome. But I discussed was all lateral medullary syndrome is also known as Wellenbach syndrome. Okay. Now, how patient will manifest? there will be ipsilateral loss of all sensation, pain touch and pain in particular and there will be contralateral in the body. This is what we got get in lateral medullary syndrome, okay. So, a lateral medullary syndrome so called Werenbach syndrome, there will be ipsilateral cerebellar features. That means, the patient will have ipsilateral <coughs> all cerebellar feature 
including nystagmus, including gait abnormalities, ipsilateral tenth nerve palsy, eighth nerve palsy, fifth nerve palsy, I told you how the patient will manifest, ipsilateral Horner syndrome and there will be contralateral loss of pain, touch, temperature. But remember, there will be, there will be phase, contralateral phase will be normal. Here, ipsilateral phase will be in pole. Right? I hope you understood the things very clearly. Now, I have a question. You can listen to the question. Stop the video after listening to the question. Write down the answer. Now, tell me in which condition there is loss of sensation in the entire contralateral side, including face, including the face, okay. But I mean to say this is the person and here is the loss of sensation, complete loss of sensation contralateral, in which condition this thing happen, you, okay. Write down the answer. I hope you have written the answer. The answer is thalamic bleed. If right bleeding occurs in the right thalamus, and there will be entire contralateral loss of sensation will be there all. Remember, there will be loss of pain, touch, temperature, position, vibration, every sensation will go in the contralateral side. And one more thing. During the recovery phase of thalamic bleed, patient develop intense burning sensation in the contralateral body. Write down the answer. What is that syndrome known as? Where recovery phase patient has pain and burning in the contralateral body. I hope you have written the answer. The answer is Desarin Rousey syndrome. This I have discussed in great detail where I discuss regarding thalamic bleed in another lecture. I hope you have seen. If not, see that lecture also. So, I hope you are much wiser about lateral medullary syndrome, so called Wellenberg syndrome. Now, I, I like to talk more about medulla and I now I am talking to you regarding medial medullary syndrome. But before that, again we go back to the basic concept of anatomy. This is the corticospinal tract, also known as pyramidal. pyramidal tract. They, they are going to supply the contralateral motor, motor fibers to the other side of the body. Here is the twelfth nerve and here is the medial lamniscus. Couple of minute back we talked about spinal lamniscus which contain the pain type temperature from the contralateral body which in fact they are the continuation of the spinothalamic tract. This medial lamniscus is the continuation of the posterior column, con contralateral posterior column. That means they will contain position, vibration sense from the contralateral body. So, if it is the right sided medial lamniscus, it contain left sided position vibration sense. With this background, now this part of the brain is supplied by direct branch from vertebral artery. And this lesion is known as medial medullary syndrome, how the patient will manifest. Ipsilateral twelfth nerve palsy, contralateral loss of position vibration and contralateral hemiplegia. So, in medial medullary syndrome, ipsilateral twelfth nerve palsy, contralateral hemiplegia or hemiparesis, whatever you can say, 
and contralateral loss of position vibration sense. From medulla we move up and now we have pons. So again before I discuss the lesion in pons that is miller gobler syndrome, let me tell you some basic concept about anatomy of pons. This is the pons, here is the corticospinal tract which contain motor fibers, pyramidal tract and here is the sixth nerve and here is the seventh nerve. Seventh nerve revolve around the sixth nerve nucleus. Now this part of the brain is supplied by branch of Ica, anterior inferior cerebellar artery. If this branch is involved, how patient will manifest? Ipsilateral sixth and seventh nerve palsy and there will be contralateral hemiplegia and this is known as miller gubler syndrome. So in miller gubler syndrome artery involved is ICA, there will be ipsilateral sixth and seventh nerve palsy and there will be contralateral hemiplegia or hemiparesis. Now I like to talk about something more depth of pon pons lesion that is Fowell syndrome. This is inferior medial pontine syndrome is the other name but before that you got to know some more basic concept. Till now I talked to you regarding sixth nerve and seventh nerve okay. Now I will be talking to you regarding medial longitudinal fasciculus and I like to talk to you regarding PPRF. What are these two structures? This you should know. First of all, I like to talk about MLF. MLF is the medial longitudinal fasciculus. MLF, medial longitudinal fascicle. What is function? Let us learn a very basic concept. We know there are eyeballs, remember eyeballs they move exactly parallel. Look at my eyes. Now I am looking at this side. This is lateral rectus and medial rectus. Supply by sixth nerve, supply by third nerve. Now I am looking this side. Lateral rectus, sixth nerve, medial rectus, third nerve. So of course there are different muscles and there are three major nerve that is third, fourth and sixth nerve and they are coordinating and remember the eye movement are exactly computerized movement parallel, there is no deviation in a normal eyes. But again different muscles, different nerves are involved, how they can work in, in such a coordinated way? This is done by the medial longitudinal fascicle. What is the function? This is the third nerve, nucleus. This is a fourth nerve nucleus, this is sixth nerve nucleus. They are united each other via MLF and due to this structure they have exactly computerized movement is there. So I hope you are clear about MLF. Now let us talk about what is this PPRF. Remember these two are PP, uh, PPRF is just lateral to MLF. Now what is this PPRF? This is a short uh, name of the paramedian pontine reticular formation. It is involved in the eye movement particularly in the lateral gaze, okay. Mainly it concerned with the lateral gaze. That means remember now I am looking this way, horizontal movement. Of course, sixth and third nerve are involved, but it is PPRF is the one which is coordinating this eye movement, right. So, if this structure is also involved, then what? So, what have what is known as Fowell syndrome? The structure involved are corticospinal tract, 
सेवेंथ नर्व एंड सिक्स नर्व दैट मीन्स वट एवर वी हैड इन मिलर गुड सिंड्रोम इट इज देयर बट वट इज एक्स्ट्रा हेयर इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ पी पी आर एफ रिमेंबर वेन ओनली सिक्स नर्व वॉज इन्वॉल्व ओनली सिक्स नर्व वॉज इन्वॉल्व दैट मीन्स देर वॉज ए गेज पॉलिसी ऑन वन साइड सपोज राइट सिक्स नर्व इन्वॉल्व तो पेशेंट कैन नॉट सी ऑन द राइट साइड बिकॉज ऑफ राइट सिक्स नर्व पॉलिसी but if pprf is also involved then there will be impairment of entire lateral gaze so in nutshell i we can say fovel syndrome is nothing but a combination of miller gulbert syndrome plus lateral gaze palsy this is fovel syndrome now we talk about basal artery locked in syndrome again we go back look at this well suppose patient has right sided fovel syndrome so what happened right sided so there will be left sided hemiplegia yes and there is lateral gaze palsy agreed suppose he has bilateral fovel syndrome so he will be also having right hemiplegia in nutshell there will be quadriplegia he has all the four limbs totally paralyzed there is no lateral gaze because of quadriplegia he cannot move at all because of lateral gaze palsy he cannot look right and left but vertical upward up down movement will be normal and patient will be fully conscious he is conscious and totally paralyzed and only movement possible is vertical gaze this is known as locked in syndrome locked in syndrome are particularly involved when basal arteries are involved basal artery branches of pons are involved and that lead to locked in syndrome why because lis they call as locked in syndrome he can think he can feel normally but he cannot move at all as so patient is locked in his own body he cannot move at all and this infarct or hemorrhage in the pons so in locked in syndrome <coughs> the main site of problem is in the ventral pontine infarct or hemorrhage and in this case patient is has quadriplegia lateral gaze palsy normal cognition now i'll talk to you regarding midbrain uh, lesions now midbrain is supplied by posterior cerebral artery superior cerebral artery and basal artery also okay this basal artery superior cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery so before i discuss lesions let me discuss the basic anatomy well in midbrain this is the cortico spinal tract this is the third nerve this is the right side and this is the left side and here is the red nucleus
okay and here is the superior cerebellar peduncle superior cerebral peduncle by this structure cerebellum is attached to midbrain now this is the cerebellum of left side well now this right headed red nucleus it get afferent from cerebellum of left side and it give rise efferent to cerebellum of left side okay well this is the basic anatomy so now this part of the brain is supplied by branch of posterior cerebral artery this right sided lesion how patient will manifest patient will manifest with right sided third nerve palsy right third nerve palsy or you can say right uh, or ipsilateral third nerve palsy i am writing ipsilateral and there will be contralateral hemiplegia so this condition is known as weber syndrome so in weber syndrome ipsilateral third nerve palsy contralateral hemiplegia yeah clear now this part of the brain is supplied by under branch of pca now structure involved are third nerve nucleus and red nucleus how the patient will manifest now there will be ipsilateral third nerve palsy no doubt about it but there will be contralateral cerebellar feature why because this red nucleus is getting getting afferent from cerebellum of other side and giving f efferent to cerebellum of other side so this is known as benedict syndrome right at time the involvement may be third nerve nucleus and superior cerebral peduncle like this that means red nucleus is not involved so but clinically patient will have same finding ipsilateral third nerve palsy and contralateral cerebellar feature so clinically there will not be any difference but only the only difficult only difference between the two is that Uh, in benedict syndrome there was involvement of red nucleus now the this is known as north nasal syndrome in north nasal syndrome it is involvement of superior cerebral peduncle artery involved same clinically same at time these all are in all and this is known as clot syndrome artery involved same clinically also same only the difference is in anatomy in so in anatomy in clot syndrome red nucleus third nerve nucleus and superior cerebral peduncle or all involved or in nutshell we can say bandic syndrome and north nasal syndrome together are known as clot syndrome so i hope you have understood it with this background so in midbrain lesion you get weber syndrome ipsilateral third nerve palsy contralateral hemiplegia in bandic syndrome ipsilateral third nerve palsy contralateral cerebellar features we have north nasal syndrome ipsi third contra cerebellar and clot syndrome clot is nothing but combination of bandic and north nasal is clot syndrome ipsi third contra cerebellar so if i have to give you summary this is summary of the midbrain now i'll give you summary of the summary of midbrain 
the summary of summary of midbrain goes like this. In all the four syndrome, there is ipsilateral third nerve palsy. In waiver, there is contralateral hemiplegia. In rest, all three syndrome, there is contralateral cerebellar features will be there. Now, one more thing like uh, I like to note it that we got syndrome like Weber syndrome, we got miller gober syndrome and medial malaria syndrome. In all these three syndrome, we are getting ipsilateral cranial nerve palsy and we are getting contralateral hemiplegia. <coughs> okay. So, this point should be very, very clear to you that there are few conditions where we have contralateral hemiplegia with ipsilateral cranial nerve palsy. Now, let us talk a little bit more about midbrain. Again, a little bit more anatomy. This is the dorsal part of the midbrain. We have a superior colliculus and this is cerebral aqueduct is there. This is superior colliculus and why it is so important? Well, when we talk about locked in syndrome, I told you vertical gaze is normal. Remember in locked in syndrome, the lesion was in pons. But why vertical gaze was not? Because vertical gaze center is interstitial nucleus of causal and this lie in midbrain. That's why in locked in syndrome, vertical movement was not involved. So now, obviously, if this part of the brain is involved, that means a so-called dorsal midbrain syndrome. So what will happen? There will be paralysis of upward gaze. Remember, in this case, horizontal gaze will be normal because that center lies in the pons. And some day reduction of <coughs> uh, eyelids can be there. This one is collier sign. But what the most, this is the most important thing that you got to remember. In Paranard syndrome, upward gaze palsy is not there. Well, to, a quick recap of what we learned in this particular lecture. We talked about lateral malnutrition syndrome, so-called Wellenbach syndrome in this ipsilateral cerebellar 10th, 8th, 5th, Horner and contralateral loss of pain, touch and temperature. Please note here there is no hemiplegia. In medial malaria syndrome, there is ipsilateral 12th nerve palsy, contralateral loss of position vibration and contralateral hemiplegia is there. miller gubler ipsilateral 6th, 7th and contralateral hemiplegia. In Fovel syndrome, miller gubler syndrome and lateral gaze palsy will be there. Uh, gaze palsy will be there. In lockdown syndrome, upward uh, movement will be hampered, but horizontal movement are totally gone with quadriparesis. In Weber syndrome, uh, in third nerve palsy with contralateral hemiplegia. In Benedict syndrome, third nerve palsy with contralateral loss, uh, contralateral cerebellar feature. In Perinaut syndrome, paralysis of upward gaze will be there. Thank you very much for watching this video.